The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. I'm Patrick, Head of Technology at professional services firm Collins SBA. I'm a former financial advisor who just loves solving business problems and creating better client experiences using technology. Join me each week as we unpack the tech on offer to advice professionals, stay on top of tech trends and help you break free from the analysis paralysis experience when building and maintaining a great tech stack. Wealth is about more than just money. It's about opportunity and progress. NetWealth is supporting financial literacy and education in primary schools through Banker, a fun, interactive platform for children to learn about money. So far, we have sponsored and given over 100,000 children in Australia free access and want to reach even more. Discover a world of community at netwealth.com.au forward slash woo. To give listeners of the Advice Tech Podcast another avenue to solve technology problems that matter most and efficiently evaluate the landscape of advice tech providers, Ensemble has launched an advice tech space on its platform. If you want to know how your advice peers are solving their tech challenges, big and small, it's the place to go. Head to the Ensemble platform or use the link in the show notes to join today. Today we're talking e-signing and ID verification with Daniel Edridge, Head of Sales and Partnerships at Anacha. You may have come across Anacha before and I often see them on LinkedIn announcing they've struck a deal with yet another Aussie business and these are businesses of all sizes and industries, but they're Australia's leading ISO 27001 certified e-signature provider and I have to say probably the most transparent and customer focused too. And that ISO certification is the International Standard for Information Security Management Systems And it means that they've put in place a system to manage risks related to the security of data handled or owned by that business. We're all using an e-signing provider. And what Daniel has to say about the transition across to Anacha and the onboarding and migration process, as well as the cost of making the switch, is really comforting. You can use it standalone, or you can use one of the many native or partner-built integration options. And recent guests of the show, Plutosoft being one of them, and of course, XPlan is in there too. We also chat about a case study where a business is saving more than 30 grand a year in e-signing costs, and it's a transparent usage-based pricing model too. I haven't even touched on the ID verification stuff, which is another core part of the product, but being able to use a piece of tech to solve these two problems or requirements is just great, and I'm actually struggling to find a reason not to make the switch. I started by asking Daniel what the oldest piece of tech he still owns is and whether he still uses it. Oldest piece of tech. Nothing nothing too crazy. Probably just like an old camera um, that I might still use from time to time. Um, unless you consider like a clock or something old technology. Um, but no, probably just my camera. Um, just for taking photos of sunsets and stuff like that. Oh, nice. No, I think I always come back to this, but someone once said it was Dr. Catherine Hunt said wheelbarrow. So I think anything that you say is considered tech. So we'll take the clock and we'll take the camera too. That's very cool. Um, and yeah, staying or moving into the current decade, there may be one or two ways that you're using AI either personally or in your work life. Yeah, probably more so personal. Um, okay. I don't really need it too much in my amateur life because all those questions are pretty easy to, to answer. But um, in like my personal life, if there's like a general knowledge question or something like that, um, I might just pull up chat GPT and go through that instead of trying to uh, go through Google to get some answers. Nice. I like it. I um, Yeah, I think that's... I feel like I, I believe they reduced like a or introduced some sort of search um, app or search capability recently. But I think the, as you mentioned, if it's general knowledge, usually it's it's probably in the LLM already. It's probably not you know time sensitive, so you're getting that same answer. That's really cool. And I guess before we jump into all things amateur, Daniel, I'd love to learn a little bit more about yourself, like how you got into tech, what's your uh, professional background, and how did you land at amateur. Yeah, so my landing at Anich is probably a little bit different to what most people would expect. Um, both myself and Corey, so obviously Corey's CEO, uh, we went to high school together, so we've known each other for a long time. Um, both of us, we dropped out of high school, so neither of us have like an um, educational background, I guess you could say. 
Um, I'm actually a mechanic by trade, um, but I did have um, a lot of interest in like software, software design, that sort of stuff. So yeah. I worked with Corey and other business in the past um, doing software engineering and then kind of took a little break from a few things. And then we both worked together at another e-sign company. Um, and then things just weren't really working out uh, very well there. And that's sort of what led to Anamshaw. So mostly just because I knew Corey, um, he knows I'm reliable. I know he's reliable. I mean, we work together really well. So that's sort of how I um, ended up at Anamshaw. That is really cool. And um, obviously, obviously, you mentioned there the, the background at another um, sort of e-signing provider. Do you mind sort of taking us through a little bit more about what it is and I guess the problem that you're solving given there's so many tools out there like what what are the problems that it solves yeah so i guess in terms of digital signing or document signing e-signing it's a pretty simple concept um there's nothing too crazy about it especially in like the advice world sort of thing um signatures and dates doesn't get too yeah. um too complex i guess you could say um i guess the biggest thing we're solving is having a quality product at a quality price um obviously international competitors have uh, been around forever they paved the way they named the entire systems did all the lawmaking with everyone um, and then because of that, they obviously come in and charge whatever they want to charge. Um, so we yeah, just came in to offer good product at a good price. Um, I do think we have a bit, bit of UI as well in a lot of ways. Um, so it's just a lot easier to use when looking at some of those international competitors. So just solving, you know, what should be a simple, uh, product, making it simple and then making it simple for the end users as well. So, um, we find a lot of people when they're using those older systems, the end people have a lot of trouble. Um, things like it's not very focused on the brand of the person sending it out. So we're really focused on just, you know, branding it as well um, for our clients. No, I love it. And uh, it's, it's really difficult to um, show something that is really clean and really simple on the front end, but I, I know that's probably not the case in the back end. But, you know, just when you log in, it's, it's you know, a four-step process to, if you're using it directly, by the way, four-step process to send out an envelope, maybe three and a half steps. So, you know, upload your docs, add the recipients, just tag and prepare your docs and then review and send it. Like it's, it doesn't get probably more simple than that and it's on one page as well. And the pricing model too is just unheard of in sort of current SaaS. Obviously, it's all about, you know, subscription revenue or more so in the, in the e-signing scene as you're sort of alluding to, it's your big providers where they're saying, you know, Take your best guess at how many documents or envelopes you're going to send this year. If you exceed that cap um, and don't renew for another 12 months, you know we'll, we'll sling you with an excessive overage fee. So it's, that clearly is is one of the largest problems I believe um, in this industry or in this scene. And you're obviously not limited to um, e signatures, and it's just so clear that that product can scale with a business. It's just so transparent that you can. Um, you know, it's, it's pay per use scales with you. If you use it more, you're going to pay more. It makes total sense. So it's a, obviously a variable cost. But do you mind sort of taking us through, I guess, the additional functionality, or sorry, the functionality in addition to e signing? Because this is really compelling and I think goes actually goes hand in hand with um, e signing. Yeah, yeah. So the other product we have, which we launched, I think about two years ago, two and a half years ago, um, is sort of a digital identity product. Um, so it's mostly for collecting and verifying primary photographic documents. So either driver's licenses or passports. Um, so instead of, you know, you onboard a client, they email you a license, which obviously isn't secure straight away. Um, they can basically take the photo of it through Anitshot, um, do like a little selfie map so they actually own the document. It does some validations in the background while it's happening as well. Um, and then you be up, you can access that through the dashboard. Um, you can download those copies too. So if you then need to upload them to um, like a hub or Macquarie, whoever it is, you have that option as well. Um, and then as well, you can destroy the documents properly as well. So instead of them sitting around in your email inbox, um, you can get them from Anachar, verify them, make sure it's all correct, um, do what you need to do with them, and then destroy the evidence. So there's no risk anymore. Love it. And I understand as well, you've got sort of two tiers of verification. I know um, with the sort of standard verification, it probably ticks the boxes from the point of view of uh, the accounting um, legislation as well as probably um, financial planning as well. But do you mind sort of talking a little bit, a little bit more about the, I guess, the enhanced option that you can tack on there too? Yeah, yeah. So technically, for like accounting, financial planning, all of them, the standard is all that's required. Yeah. Um, if you want to, you can maybe a little bit more protection for yourself to the enhanced option. Basically, what the enhanced does, nothing changes on the client side of things, so it's still a really simple process for them. Um, but at the end, we'll generate an basically an AML report, anti-money lending report, 
Um, and that will go through, do your PEP checks, your sanction checks, all of that stuff. Um, generally, if you're like a financial planner, your licensee will do this anyway. All the um, institutions would do it anyway, but maybe you just want to do it yourselves um, for a little bit of protection beforehand. You can do that as well. So yeah, that just generates that yeah. report. If they come up on like a terror watch list or something like that, um, that would be flagged in that report for you. Yeah, it's so interesting. And I think it becomes super relevant for especially clients that you're not meeting face-to-face. Like if it's just a virtual relationship, then it's totally warranted. And I also noticed as well, and this just goes, it just fits hand in hand, is you've got this add-on where you can actually append like a TFN and a bank detail, um, I guess, fields in there that's also done securely. Do you mind sort of talking about that? Yeah, so when we first released the identity product, that was pretty much the first thing that was requested. Right. Requested the most on the first day. Um, so we had that one out pretty much the next day. Yeah, it's just a secure way to, in that onboarding stage, um, you can collect the TFN and the bank details at the same time. Um, most people at the moment might do it over a phone call or something like that, um, which obviously then you're probably writing it down somewhere you shouldn't. Um, so at least manage up. You collect it digitally in that same time in that same sort of identity process. Um, and then once again, same with the documents. Once you've done everything you need to, you can purge that and destroy that information as well. Yeah, I love it. And uh, honestly, if you're getting, if you're asking clients for sensitive information, you might as well do it in the one go and not have to do that, you know, next week or six months later or when, you know, for example, you know, with bank details, it's especially relevant for accountants, I believe, in terms of when they're trying to put that into, you know, their practice management software for tax return details, as well as, you know, probably financial advisors too. If you're setting up maybe a nominated bank account for an associated product like a pension payment or something like that, and obviously TFN too, if we're setting up products, we need to um, relay that securely. No, that's is really, really cool. And I guess like you've got those two, I guess they're, they're the flagship pieces of functionality. What sort of happens when that document is completed? Does it depend on the sort of integrations that you've got set up? Is it really just sort of going in and, and taking it from there? What does it sort of look like once an envelope's completed? Yeah, so we've got integrations into a few different financial planning softwares. Um, we do have an open API as well. So technically, anyone can build their own integrations if they need to. If we're looking at, say, XBlend, for example, we can have the documents automatically filing as a file note um, against the client in XBlend based on what you select. Um, so that reads from your type and subtype um, at the time, and that's how it syncs back at the end. Uh, we've got the same sort of thing with work sorted as well, so you can do the same workflow. Um, there's a few other CRMs out there that build their own integrations, so you can generate those envelopes from within those, and they file them back automatically. Um, and if you're not using any of those systems or you don't want to leak the integration, yeah, you can just download the documents and then upload them wherever you need yep. to as well. Awesome. Yeah, I think um, it might be PlutoSoft that's another one that's probably built their own integration there, which is really cool. And yeah, yeah I think it, like once you can send that envelope and then not have to worry about what happens on the other side, that's just really contributing to efficiency there. I mean, obviously we've got, as you mentioned, we're destroying or have the ability to destroy data if we don't need it anymore. So your TFNs or even the the copies of the IDs. Do you mind sort of talking about what the sort of overall approach has been to cybersecurity? Yeah, so since since launching or since before launching, um, we always knew that cybersecurity was pretty much the most important thing. Um, so three months after we launched Anich, we had our ISO 27001. So it's always been built on like a secure framework or a security-based framework. Um, it is the most important thing. It's always been the most important thing when, you know, after we launched Anich, Obviously, the majority of institutions only accepted DocuSign and Adobe Sign. So, getting that acceptance across the line, one of the major factors was proving we're secure, having that ISO, going through all of the audits, um, so just having the correct frameworks, making sure all of our staff followed um, all the correct frameworks as well, which obviously was very easy initially when it was just Corey and myself. Um, now, there's a few others, so we've got to make sure everyone stays under that wing. Um, but yeah, being a software company these days, you're as much of a security company um, at the same time anyway. Yeah, it makes total sense, and obviously, sort of multiple, multiple birds or multiple uh, things done there with with one stone. And this this might be an obvious question, but I mean, probably most businesses would have a need for at least e signing. But who would you say it's sort of best suited to? Yeah, so realistically, anyone. Um, yep. I do have a lot of people ask a similar type question, like who are your main customers? Yeah, um, our biggest is accounting and financial planning. Um, obviously, like mortgage broking, legal. Um, but yeah, across the board, I've got caravan parks who use Anitra. Right. Um, I've got like adventure people who do like kids camps um, in school holidays. So there's literally anyone and everyone who needs signatures can use Anitra. 
um, our biggest industries and focus are obviously in like finance, accounting, that sort of stuff. Um, but anyone outside of that, yeah, car dealerships, um, literally, literally yeah. any you can even think of, um, can use Anatra across Australia and pretty much the world. Sweet. Yeah, I think you've definitely picked the right market. And as you mentioned, that sort of, you know, sort of honing in on professional services. And that's, I believe, would be reflected in those sort of breadth of native integrations as well. Yeah, on the integrations, that obviously a lot of the conferences that we'll go to. So pretty much all of the conferences have been focused on accounting, financial planning, on those professional sort of sectors. Yeah. No, fantastic. Daniel, have you got any case studies of what that sort of transition looks like to using Anitra? I know most businesses are probably already using an e-signing tool and we're not just, you know, logging on and starting to use this tool. How does that sort of transition look like? And have you got any examples for us of where that's worked really well? Yeah, so the transition is pretty pretty easy, pretty natural. Um, generally, what the process is, is if people do want to go ahead, um, they let me know. Well, they let, no, I'll let Harrison know. So, he's our other um, sales onboarding sort of back here. Um, we then set up the Anitra for them. So, we'll preset the branding. We'll get some templates and that sort of stuff in there for them. Um, we'll help set up all of their accounts as well. So, if they need, um, I don't know, 100 accounts, 50 accounts, whatever it is, if they have specific share rules, permissions, all of that, um, we'll aid in get all of, getting all of that set up for them. Um, it only takes about 10 minutes. So, um, it's not not a big time time yeah. thing for us to do. It's all really easy. And obviously, it's all we do all day, every day. So, um, very easy for us to do. Um, once we do that, depending on the organization, um, we'll run through training sessions with them and their team. Um, we don't charge any extra for any of these services either. That's basically just all included um, in what we offer. And then the training sessions, some people, um, they don't really need a training session because it is so similar to uh, certain providers like DocuSign yeah. or Adobe Sign, whatever they're using. Um, they don't have to relearn everything. Um, we still offer it. Um, and yeah, the turnaround times usually, yeah, 12 to 48 hours, worst case, um, depending on what needs to be configured for them. Awesome. No, that's really comforting. And you mentioned there those sort of, you know, complementary training sessions and support, whereas it's not a sort of mandatory line item on the invoice from the bigger provider on support. Have you maybe got any uh, sort of recent examples of, of where that transition has resulted in sort of big dollar savings or efficiency gains? Yeah. So, Towards the beginning of last year, I think it was, uh, we had My Budget. They're a big company, a um, few hundred uh, employees based in Adelaide. Um, they were using DocuSign, so um, obviously the traditional player. Um, they'd been using them for a little while. Um, they were a little bit worried about the transition. Um, once we sort of got through the demos and showed them everything, they saw the product was similar um, in everything that worked. In terms of the onboarding, there was a couple of little custom workflows that we had to do for them. Um, I was traveling um, in Tassie, so that was good fun to coordinate all of that. Um, but we've got those features built within like a week or two, had them deployed um, and available for my budget to use. And that was sort of a core component of them doing the transition. Um, and then in that transition, their e-sign bill has gone down basically from well over 50000 per year um, to just over about 13000 per year with Anitra. So they're saving what, 30, 37 grand sort of thing um, per year. Yeah. No, that's fantastic. And we'll link into the show notes. I know there's a, a press release on that one. So, thank you. And I've also heard that you can uh, work with businesses that are on board and actually rescue their envelopes from their other provider that might be holding them ransom. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, we have the ability to bulk download envelopes for people. Um, so, we had a um, client a couple of weeks ago. They've been a DocuSign customer for about five or six years. Um, they've finally gotten sick of um, the pricing, I guess you could say. Um, and yeah, we over about three or four days, uh, we were able to download all of their historical envelopes um, and basically make them accessible in Anatra. So once they do stop using DocuSign, they don't have to worry about losing all of that data. Um, or DocuSign does have a product for that. Generally, it's about eight and a half thousand dollars a year sort of thing to purchase it or to purchase the license. Um, whereas yeah, generally we can do it for free or generally you know well and half of that cost if it is a very big download. Yeah. No, that's it's really intriguing and obviously the cost there to access what you would think is your own data um, and it really sort of begs the question of whose data is it. And just to reiterate, you're saying that you can actually, it's not just exporting those documents, you can actually migrate them into Anitra as well. So, there's that sort of alleviating the change management there. Yeah. Yeah. So, we make them fully available in Anitra. Um, there's basically a special area in our dashboard once we do a migration like that. And if the accounts in Anitra match the senders from DocuSign as well, we can even sort of match them up in the dashboard so those people can see oh, wow. what they've sent out from DocuSign and access that in Anitra as well. Well, wow. that, no, that's actually, that is unheard of. So, that's that's really seamless and, and really cool. And yeah, just sort of a testament to the, the client experience focus of the business, which is just great. And 
if we're thinking about, you know, some of us might have just signed contracts with other vendors. Have you got any insight or any tips on, you know, we might be considering something like an amateur. How do we approach that conversation? Yeah. So one thing that we sort of did, I think the second we launched Anacha, this is one of our unique offerings, I guess you could say, um, is we'll honor out the DocuSign or whatever um, company you're with subscription. So like if you've just signed up to DocuSign or like a lot of people, you didn't know that you signed a two-year contract because um, that's something they've been doing for the last okay. couple of years. <laughs> right. Yeah, And a lot of people don't realize. So if you're one of those people and you're stuck in for another year, if you basically share that end date with us, we'll give you Anish for free in the interim. And then we set the ability to start when that ends. So you don't have to worry about continuing to use that product or worry about um, like a fast change over period. You can use Anitra for free now. And then we set the billing at the end of that time. Wow. No, that's definitely unique. And once again, client experience, that's just awesome. And as you mentioned, there's that sort of breathing space to, you know, we don't have this date that's happening next week while you're in Tassie on obviously annual leave, but still helping out everyone. Um, no, that's really cool. Do you mind sort of talking about, you know, what's what's the future of Anitra look like? Like what's, can you share anything with us that's on the roadmap and, or what's got you excited about the future of Anitra? Um, there's no no big features that we're rolling out immediately soon. Um, probably the most exciting thing is just a lot of the integrations that are coming. Yeah. Um, and building out a lot more integrations with a lot more, um, I guess, Aussie companies. I'm always very excited to work with Australian companies. Um, so, obviously, you mentioned earlier, Plurisoft, um, they just rolled out an integration, I think, about a month ago now. Okay. Um, I know Live Press are working on one as well. I know that they're DocuSign at the moment. So, they're working to add on it. In. So, I generally get most excited about integrations like that. We've just finished up building out a bit of a work sorted integration. Um, yep. Hopefully, there'll be a couple of others coming in the near future. But that's what I get most excited about, working with Aussie companies, um, especially sort of putting up to um, the big players out there, which a lot of them have a similar attitude um, and just delivering a quality product with them at the same time. I love it. And just to sort of clarify or confirm my understanding of some of the extended integrations, is it, is it really embedding that amateur experience inside those tools? So that sort of depends on the integration partner, I guess you could say. Yep. So obviously, Plutosoft, they're the ones who have done the heavy heavy lifting. They've gone ahead and built it into their own product. Um, whereas with some products where we've built the integration, that's where it's probably not as seamless um, as it would be if it were built on their end. So like Xflame, for example, that's where we've built into them. Um, I think it is sort of the the best offering that anyone has into Xflame um, in the market anyway, yep. um, in terms of what we're doing. But yeah, when when that client actually is the one who can build the integration themselves, that's when you get that much more seamless and better experience. Um, yeah, perfect. No, congratulations on a wonderful product that obviously puts the client first, but also is just the transparency and the sort of ethical nature of of this versus the other players out there is just really refreshing. Have we have we missed anything, Daniel? Is there anything else you want to leave us with? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I guess, yeah, like the, the most important points you've already touched on about being pretty transparent with everyone on pricing, that sort of stuff. Uh, no 60% overage fee um, yep. if you go over, like like a lot of them um, seem to offer. We we invoice at the same discounted rate if you do go over. Um, so, there's no, no crazy penalties or anything like that. Yeah, it's not, not too much more to it. Perfect. No, thank you so much for your time, Daniel. I've really enjoyed the discussion today. Is there a best way to get started or to learn more about Anitra? Yeah, so best way, um, you can just go through our home website and sign up for a free trial if you want to. Um, there's no limitation on our free trials. There's no commitment to anything. So, you can get in, have a little play around. Um, if you'd like to book a meeting with us um, on that little uh, website, uh, you can book a call. That will go straight to me. Um, you can reach out to me um, through the website or just through my email um, or phone, which I'm guessing we can put in the bottom at the end. I think everyone's in the show notes now after that case study. Perfect. Daniel, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.